you who were invited and you're on the call now, but turn to your Bibles to 2 Corinthians 6, and we're going to read again verse 14, uh, and thank God for my wife and first lady, uh, Dr. Corden, and my daughter, she's manning the camera. God bless you, woman of God. I got a beautiful face to look at while I'm preaching. <laughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs> but go ahead. Glory to God. Be not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. Okay, now see this. Here, here are the principles of holiness. Be not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. Mm -hmm. Be not unequally yoked. There's a way to connect with the unbeliever. Yes. But God says, I want you to separate yourself and don't be unequally yoked. You're not on the same level of holiness and unholiness, yes, uh, clean and unclean. And we went through those principles uh, last night that uh, spiritually, the unbeliever, and, and, I, and I'm saying this as kindly as I can, because as you see with the virus, mm -hmm. the virus doesn't play fair. No, it doesn't. It doesn't care how well you dress, how good you look, how much money you got in That's your pocket, exactly who right. your family is. That's right. That virus will get in you and it will kill and destroy you. The unbeliever is a candidate for the virus of sin. The, the virus of sin is killing you. It's killing you. And, and no matter how good you look, how much you smile, and how you carry on in your life, if you're an unbeliever, then you are infected mm -hmm. with sin. Yes, and, and, and I want to get you out of sin. I want to get you isolated. Uh, I want you to get you out of sin, mm -hmm. and I want to get you into Christ. Yes, sir. So he tells the believer to not to be not unequally, unequally yoked, together. yoked with unbelievers. unbelievers. Uh -huh. For what fellowship has righteousness with unrighteousness? And in and, and like manner, you can't put righteousness and unrighteousness together and expect to be right. If, if you want to live a righteous life, you can't mix unrighteousness with it. Yes, sir. You can't do wrong to make it right. Mm -hmm. You cannot lie to make it right. Mm -hmm. You can't do wrong things and say God right. understands. God is calling us to holiness. You can't go out in the world today yes, physically sir. and get in contact with the coronavirus simply because you want to do what you want to do. That a uh, virus is does not care what your intentions are. Mm -hmm. If you get in contact with it, you will catch it. You cannot do wrong and still remain to do right. See, sin is wrong. Mm -hmm. And no matter what you do, you can't make sin right. Yes, sir. And he's saying you can't put righteousness and unrighteousness together. Uh -huh. You know, you can't sin on Saturday, then come to church on Sunday and suppose that you're all right because you're dancing or singing mm -hmm. or, or reading a scripture. Or You see, you can't do wrong on on Saturday to come to church on Sunday and think that you're, that you're still right with God. That's right. Yes, sir. And, and many people do wrong, get home at night, repent before they go to bed, and ask God to forgive them only to do it again. Mm -hmm. See, you cannot have fellowship with unrighteousness and then expect to stay right. Sin is still dominant in your life. Yes, sir. And what communion has light with darkness? And what communion has light with darkness? If you turn the light on, darkness goes away. Yes, sir. You've never seen light and dark exist in the same, same place, place at the same time. One of them has to go. And light is not the absence of darkness. Mm -hmm. Darkness is the absence of light. Because mm -hmm. whenever you turn the light on, darkness has That's to go. Flea. Whenever you invite Jesus into your life, sin has to go. Whenever you uh, confess that Jesus is your Savior and your Lord, 
then the sin component or the darkness that's in your life has to flee. Yes, sir. So you want to shine light on every Glory dark place in your life, mm -hmm. and that will eliminate the sin Amen. that's in your life. And and we've gone so far off base that yeah. that people are coming to church now. Uh, you can't hardly tell holiness from unholiness. You can't hardly tell people who say they're saved uh, from people who are not saved. Mm -hmm. it, it has become so mingled uh, that God is, 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 is grieved at it. And that's why uh, I believe God has given us the uh, opportunity to prepare for the rapture. Yes, sir. Now more than ever, if, if no other clue, if no other sign has mm -hmm. caught your attention, then this ought to catch your attention mm -hmm. and hope that that the delay of the Lord yes, sir. is his compassion and yes, sir. compassion for you to get it right in your life. Amen. Many of you now are praying and, and wanting God to work miracles for you. Yes. I'll tell you right now that if you get closer to God as I'm praying, as I'm, and I'm, I'm speaking the word of God, if you will repent of your sins yes. and things that you know that God is speaking to you right now. Say, so you know you shouldn't be doing this and mm -hmm. you know you shouldn't be doing that. Mm -hmm. uh, then repent and turn away from those things. And you'll find your miracles and your blessings just waiting for you yes. to get things right in your life. There's some things that God can't answer because you won't repent. Mm -hmm. Isaiah says God's hand is not shortened mm -hmm. that it cannot save no nor is his ear Thank too you, heavy God. that he cannot hear but he says it's sin that separates you, us from God and so God's hand won't deliver his ear won't hear until he hear us repent yes, and Lord. walk according to his will and yes. to his word so when you come out of sin and ask God to save you, I know you get a good feeling and, and you feel right and you feel wonderful on the inside, but the good feeling is not an excuse to go back and do what God saved you out of. Yes, sir. You've got to walk free from that sin. Yes. Now, go, skip down to the first verse of that seventh chapter. Have I therefore these promises, dearly beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit. So we got to, because God promises us that he will bless us. He says, I'll be your father. You shall be my sons and my daughters. He wants to walk with you. Yes. He wants to commune with you. Uh, he says uh, in Revelations, behold, I Stand at the door and knock. knock. So while you're home and have your door shut, Isaiah 26, and while you're waiting for the Lord to say you can come out like he did Noah when he was in the ark and it mm -hmm. rested on Mount Eric. And when God. the ark rested on Mount Thank Eric, you, it was not time for Noah to come out mm -hmm. until God gave him a sign that he could come out of yes. the ark. His sign is we're going to stay in the house. We're going to stay in behind our doors until God does something in your life. Yes. Uh, it, it may be you that if you will go ahead and repent and ask God to come in your life, that, that he will he will lift the yes. plague, lift it's the so curse. True. But he's trying to get all of us, every one of us, to be right with him. He wants to be sons. He wants us to be his sons and daughters. daughters. Wouldn't it be sad that after this uh, pandemic is over, Jeez. that you will still be in your sins, that you will still not be where God wants you to be, and you go back and things start back mm -hmm. normal mm -hmm. with your life, living outside mm -hmm. of the will of God. Mm -hmm. And you'll be thinking that because it's over, that it's all right, that you can continue to walk in your sins, but not so. God is giving us a chance. Yes. He's giving every one of us a chance to get it right. Yes, sir. The principles of, of holiness includes separation. Mm -hmm. And we talked about separation on last night, and in and, and, and the next few minutes I want to uh, share a couple of other things 
with you. I wanted you to look at Leviticus 13 and and 3. Yes, sir. And uh, uh, First Lady is, is getting it in yes, sir. my Bible tonight. She doesn't have hers, so it may take her a while to get I there. You got it. Oh, mm. Praise God. Okay. Uh, Leviticus 13 and verse 3. And the priest shall look on the plague in the skin of the flesh. And when the hair in the plague is turned white, and the plague in the sight be deeper than the skin of his flesh, it is a plague of leprosy. And the priest shall look on him and pronounce him unclean. The leper was pronounced unclean because of the condition of his skin. Yes. And the priest had to observe and and, and God told the priest to look at the leper's skin. Mm -hmm. And if it fits the description, and, and read that again. And the priest shall look on the plague of the... And the priest shall look on the plague. And the priest going to look at the plague. In the skin. In the skin. Of the flesh. Uh -huh. And when the hair of the plague is turned white. So the hair that's in the plague, if it turns white. Uh-huh. And the plague in the sight is deeper than the skin of his flesh. And the, and the plague goes down deeper than the skin. It's not mm. just on the top, but it go, and you see that it's wow. deep in the skin. Uh -huh. It is a plague of leprosy. Then it's, it's leprosy. Yes. And the priest shall look on him uh -huh. and pronounce him unclean. So when he sees mm. that this condition goes deep, he says it's unclean. Uh -huh. God has sent the men and the women of God to look at sin and and say, you know, you're not living right. Yes, sir. You're not doing right. Yes, sir. See, the principle was looking at this condition and calling it unclean, but uh -huh. in the spirit, on the spiritual side, there was a spiritual side to this also. Mm -hmm. See, many times God said something to show you sicknesses and diseases. But it also represented something spiritually. Mm -hmm. That the man and the woman of God looking at the leper, that the priests looked at it and said, it, it is, is unclean. unclean. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. And so once that leper was uh, pronounced unclean, then that leper was contagious. Mm -hmm. And once that leper is contagious, then everything, look at the, uh, the, 50th the 51st verse of Leviticus 13. And he shall look on the plague on the seventh day. If the plague be spread in the garment. Okay, so now uh, the, 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 the leper comes back after seven days. And the priest looks at the leper's garment. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Either in the warp. Or in the wolf, or in the skin, mm -hmm. or in any work that is made of skin, and the plague is fretting leprosy, it is unclean. So now, you look at the leper's garment, and if the leper's garment has this destructive mildew in it, then not only is the man unclean, yes. but now his clothes, clothes is unclean. Yes. So it's spreading. Now look at the Leviticus 14 and verse 44. Yes, sir. See, it's some interesting reading when you can look at it in the context that it also has spiritual applications, yes. not just to the fact that he's talking about how to get, how to get, uh, how to deal with uh, viruses mm -hmm. and contagious diseases, but it also speaks to con the contagium of sin, wow. how that sin can can go through your family, go through your house and home, how mm. sin can spread uh, around you, how uh, you know you can make your sins. Uh, contagious to others, and mm -hmm. if you're a person of influence, yes, uh, if you're if you do certain things that's wrong, and your children or someone who admires you see you doing the same thing, mm -hmm. 
you can spread yes. that sin. Wow, yeah. Okay. It's, uh, uh, 14, Leviticus 14 and verse 44. Then the priest shall come and look, and behold, if the plague be spread in the house, it is a fretting leprosy in the house. It is unclean. So that now the leper's house has to be inspected. Yes. And if the leper's house has this mildew, has this plague, then now the house is full of leprosy. Yes. And it is unclean. Look at what the coronavirus is doing. And uh, we, we are praying for the men and women in New York right now. Yes, sir. And other parts of the world. But I'm just using New York as an example, how it has spread it so rapidly there. And how even here uh, we can see it spreading. Yes, sir. Because people are not separating themselves. When uh, you're in contact with a person, even though uh, if that person has, has the disease, and even though you may not see it, it doesn't mean that you can't catch it. That's right. And, and it comes up later. later. Mm -hmm. and, and, and that's why it's so important to separate yourself. And I want you to be careful while you're at home is to spend some quality time with the Lord. And uh, because what could happen behind all of this is we are, if we're not hearing God, if we're not listening to God, mm -hmm. not only do we have this uh, this. Uh, what is it? That we're shutting and we everybody's home yeah, quarantine. quarantine. Not only do we have the quarantine, what if the lights went out? Mm. What if we lost power? What if we couldn't get water? Yes. You know, we're connected to a water system. What and 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 if the water shuts down, I don't have a pump anymore. That's right. See, we're we're facing things wow. of biblical proportion. Yes, and you look right. at the Bible, and, and the scripture says these are the beginning of sorrows and. And, and we're at the beginning of the beginning. We're mm -hmm. at the end of the last days and getting ready to flow into the beginning of sorrow. So we're, we're overlapping and coming into the turning of the page. Yes. We're beginning to see what a lot of people doubted. We're beginning to see what a lot of people said wouldn't happen. And now mm -hmm. it's happening and people are trying to find reasons mm -hmm. not to believe God. But I want you to trust and believe God. God. Believe what God says in his word. Don't take this as a joke. No, sir. Because he says in the scriptures how a third of the world would be in famine. A third of the world would be in fires and plagues. A third of the world, the leprosies mm. would, the, the uh, locusts would sting. You know, there's some horrific things ahead that will not happen to us. Jesus. If we accept Jesus Christ now, mm -hmm. and we will escape in the rapture. Mm -hmm. But when we are taken away, First Thessalonians, I believe it says that, that he who letteth, you know, will now let. Mm -hmm. that, that the only reason that this is not coming full force is because the Holy Spirit which is in the church, is still in the world. Mm -hmm. But when the church is raptured and the Holy Spirit's influence mm -hmm. of pulling his church together for Christ has gone, then uh, the world is open for the power of Satan to mm -hmm. work through the Antichrist. Mm -hmm. We know the Antichrist possibly is alive right now and mm -hmm. sitting or getting ready to sit in uh, his position of power. And, and we can see the beginnings of this. Uh, you know, like uh, you can see it. Yes, sir. But the moment you see it, like Psalms 91, you'll see it, but it won't come nigh thee because you will be raptured. Yes. So it's time to do it now. Yes, sir. It's time to accept Jesus. And if you're listening, and if I've slightly convinced you, then accept Jesus Christ into your life. Say, yes, Lord, Lord. Uh, I realize I'm a sinner. Yes, sir. 
I realize, yes, God, that you come to save, yes, Lord. that you've given me every opportunity. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. You've given me every chance. You're yes, showing Lord. me. Thank you, Jesus. And now the man of God is warning me. Thank you, Jesus. And showing me that it's time to Thank accept you, Jesus. Jesus into my life. Yes, Lord. And Lord, I ask you to come into my heart right, right now. now. Don't have all of the answers. Don't know everything I need to know. Right now, Lord. But if you come in, I will be willing yes, Lord. to listen and obey. Yes, Lord. Whatever's wrong in my life, I'm trusting you that trusting you will take you, it out. God. But I'm coming to you now. Coming to you now. Asking you to save, save me. Lord. In Jesus' name. And Jesus if you believe name. that prayer, if you yes, pray sir. that prayer, then God has certainly heard your prayer. Glory to God. And save. the Bible says if you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart. Thank God. That God raised Jesus from the dead. If you believe that, the Bible says that thou shalt be, be saved. saved. You have a testimony, and I want you to now to testify. I want you to put it on Glory the. Glory be to um, God. I want you to put it up and post it, or, or message it, or however uh, you have to to let us know that you've heard, you prayed, and now you are saved. Yes. We want to flood uh, these you, communication centers with uh, the reports of salvation, the reports of healing. Glory. Tomorrow night when we come back, we want to believe God for miracles. We yes. want to come back hearing about the miracles the that miracle. God has done Do for you. Lord. Things that you put on the prayer line tonight. And Glory after to the God. prayer... We want to testify, testify, give that praise report that Glory God heard to God. and answered prayer. prayer. We bless the Lord on this evening. We thank God for the man of God mm -hmm. taking the time and diligently researching uh, through the word of God to pull a, a relevant word today, not just what you thought about in the past, but a word for today. And we can see the comparison. Uh, what happened then? It's happening now. Mm -hmm. And what God said would happen, it's happening. Yes. So we've got to know that we need Jesus, yes. that we need God. We need him more now than we've ever done. And we need to spread the word of God to let a dying world know that Jesus is real. Mm -hmm. And he wants us to get back to holiness. Yeah. God bless you. We're going to turn it back over to uh, those of you who's doing a marvelous job great job praise the lord all right we're going to disconnect uh, the live on this end